New clues in the Kennedy assassination tonight. A new book titled Oswald Talked reveals never before heard evidence in the case. And some of the revelations come from Lee Harvey Oswald's own cellmate. The Warren Commission never heard from him, and the House Assassination Committee didn't interview him. But John Elrod may be the most important witness yet in the slain of John F. Kennedy. Because on the day the president died, he was thrown into a jail cell with Lee Harvey Oswald. The images are still disturbing, even after all these years. An open motorcade on a sunny Dallas afternoon. A young president and his glamorous first lady. Then tragedy. For 30 years, we've been told the alleged assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, was a deranged, solitary figure, working alone when he fired a cheap mail-order rifle at the president. For over three decades, we've been told that Jack Ruby was also acting alone when he murdered Oswald. He's been shot. He's been shot. But that was before we learned about this man's close encounter with Lee Harvey Oswald in the Dallas City Jail. Did he look nervous, sir? I imagine we were all nervous. When you say the word nervous, I say worried. It was here, on the day the president died, that John Elrod learned about an alleged secret meeting between Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby. A meeting that happened just days before, involving guns, gangsters, and money. But for the last 33 years, John Elrod has kept that secret. He's been in hiding, afraid to admit what he knows. But with the help of his family, hard copy found him on an obscure island. He talked about Dallas. And even after all this time, he was still worried. See, right now I'm saying things that could, could really get me in trouble. It's not going to get you in trouble. You're telling the truth. Yeah. And you the, know... The, the truth can get you killed, too. You take Osmo. A lot of people think he's innocent. His is dead. He's gone. I could be innocent. I could be gone next week if, 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 if the wrong thing is said. And this is the sheriff's uh, letter stating that Elrod came in. With the story of John Elrod would still be hidden were it not for Hollywood director Oliver Stone. His movie, JFK, caused such a public outcry that the Dallas police decided to release long hidden records. There's been more in the files than I ever thought would be there. You know, there's been several startling revelations that have come out that have not made their way into the mainstream uh, media. And that's how investigative journalists Ray and Mary LaFontaine discovered Elrod's existence while working on their new book, Oswald Talked. They found long-lost Dallas police files for the afternoon the president was shot. It was about 2.45 p.m. Oswald was already in custody. I didn't shoot anybody, sir. I haven't been told what I'm here for. Somebody reported seeing a man with a rifle not far from Ely Plaza. When the police arrived, they spotted John Elrod. He didn't have a gun, but they took him in anyway. They put him in a cell with Oswald. Oswald had been roughed up by the cops. Uh, I, I, I can't say for sure, but in my mind, I thought that he was bruised slightly, somewhere around this, this, this area in here. John Elrod's brother, Lindy, remembers what happened next. He told John, he said, I did not shoot no president. John said, I know I didn't shoot no president. I believe that, that the Oswald told Johnny something, and he just don't want to come out with it. I don't know what happened, really don't know what happened, and never, probably never will know. But something, to me, put a fright in Johnny. The most obviously frightening thing that occurred happened in the basement. While millions of TV viewers watched, Lee Harvey Oswald was gunned down by Jack Ruby. It scared the hell out of me. Because uh, I knew Jack Ruby. But something else scared John Elrod too. According to newly discovered documents, Elrod was tormented by what he knew. Nine months after the assassination, he showed up at the sheriff's office in Memphis and said he had information concerning the murder of Lee Oswald. The FBI was called in. He told them that back in the Dallas jail, his cellmate had talked about a motel room meeting where money changed hands. It was some sort of gun deal, and Jack Ruby was at the meeting too. 
Now, Oswald was never mentioned in the FBI report, but if the story checks out, it is extraordinary because it places Ruby and Oswald together just days before the assassination, something that the Warren Commission, the 1979 House Committee on Assassinations, and 30 years of independent investigations have failed to do. And it appears there really was such a gun-running plot because just three days before Elrod's jailhouse encounter in Dallas, there was a high-speed police chase. Two ex-cons crashed a car loaded with guns. One of the men worked for Jack Ruby, and at the time, Ruby was suspected of gun running. The basic facts of the gun deal are true facts from an actual case that the FBI was involved in. But in 1964, when the Memphis FBI tried to check out John Elrod's story, the Dallas field office said he wasn't even in jail the day JFK died. So the Memphis FBI closed their file. Yet newly discovered police records prove that Elrod was in jail. So the question is, was there a cover-up? It does indicate that the FBI concealed it and covered it up quickly, that they didn't want any loose ends. And that only conforms to the larger pattern of what Hoover did, and John uh, J. Edgar Hoover, by closing down any serious investigation. So what was John Elrod's big secret? Perhaps the biggest secret of all. The knowledge that when Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald, he was killing somebody he knew, somebody he wanted to keep quiet. Today, when confronted with the FBI report, John Elrod admits he told the FBI that Oswald was his cellmate, but he says he never told them anything about guns, gangsters, or Ruby. Well, what did you tell them? I just told them I was, I was arrested for the, for the murder down there, and I was in the cell with Oswald, and that was it. We try to reassure him. Try to tell him that the more people who know the truth, the safer he will be. But he does not believe us. Whatever else he knows, our secrets, he may take to his grave. If he tried to tell it and nobody listened, it probably will never tell it again. Despite repeated requests for an interview, the FBI declined to comment on our report.